All right, guys. Hey, welcome to the video. So here today, this one's a little bit different. We are going to cover some things in Multiman that some people may not be aware of. Now, these things may be like little tips or hints or maybe just some stuff that's just outright secretive that you didn't know about that's designed to help you out and make your life easier when you're using Multiman. And I know this has been around for 10 years or so already. But there are a lot of people to the PS3 modding and hacking scene that are new thanks to Hen. So they've just joined over the past year or two or even less than that. And so they may not be familiar with some of these things. And I think that even some of you seasoned veterans out there might find one or two things here that you weren't aware of and might be useful to help you out and again make your life easier. And if you want to continue to see videos like this and to just throw some support to the channel, you guys know the best way to do that is of course to hit that like button. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so here we are at Multiman on my PS3 and let's start off with something simple that I'm pretty sure everyone knows no matter where you are at on any of the main menus here of Multiman, when you hold down the circle button for a couple of seconds, you'll be prompted to quit to the XMB. You can hit yes and then Multiman closes. You're taken to the XMB and this saves you the time of having to come here to the first column and you know hitting quit Multiman. When you're in the file manager though, you can do the same thing. Now when you're in the file manager, if you hold down the circle button anywhere, it doesn't do it. But that's because it's different. When you hold down the triangle button here, it will do it. So hold it down for a couple of seconds, then hit yes, and you're taken to the XMB. What's interesting here is that if you quit to the XMB from here, when you come back from the XMB, instead of being at the home menu of Multiman, you're brought right back here to the file manager. This could be useful for people who are messing with files and then want to see the results on the XMB and you're going back and forth. That way you don't have to uh, go into Multiman's main menu and just come back into the file manager. You're just brought right back to the file manager from the XMB if you quit to the XMB from here, which can be kind of useful. And Multiman actually has quite a few of these types of shortcuts. They're listed over at the Multiman wiki page, which I'll put down in the description. When you go there, you'll find actually a whole wealth of information that you might be interested in and most of the button combinations are listed there as well as some other stuff. We'll be coming back to it here in a little bit. But for example, when you're here at the file manager, if you hold down select a button while you're holding it down, if you press the start button, you'll be taken to the main menu of Multiman. Then when you're anywhere on the main menu, if you do it again, hold down select and then tap start, you'll be taken right back to the file manager. So that's a nice little shortcut. If you hold down start anywhere in Multiman and then tap the select button, you'll be asked if you want to restart Multiman. And next up, I'm gonna show you something that I don't even think is listed in that Multiman wiki. If you want to highlight all the files in a directory, and this can come in handy when you're dealing with large groups of files that you want to copy, delete, or whatever. When you have the directory open, like you see here, and you want to highlight everything in that directory, just hold down select while you're holding it down, press and hold X, and all the files in that directory will be highlighted, whether they're folders, text files, it doesn't matter. And then you could do whatever it is you want with them, copy them, delete them, whatever. If you want to deselect some of the files, if you want to make them exempt from whatever it is you're doing, just press X on them and you can see those will be unhighlighted and they will be exempt from whatever it is you're going to do. If you want to unhighlight or deselect everything in the directory, hold down select and while you're holding it down, press and hold square and then everything gets deselected. Again, this can come in really handy when dealing with lots of files. 
All right, and next, while we're here at the file manager, you can change the background to whatever it is you want. All you need to do is come to the images folder, which is called IMG. This is its location right up here. Hopefully I'll remember and I'll put it down in the description as well. When you come to this image folder, scroll down to deskbg.jpg. That is the file you're looking for. That is your background image. Now there are many image files here that you can change and whatnot. Whenever you take out any image from Multiman, you can edit it however you like or replace it. Just make sure the name is exactly the same when you put it back. It needs to be the same format with the same extension and the size or the dimensions need to be the same. So if it's 1280 by 720, just make sure the file you're putting back is 1280 by 720. So just make sure you keep everything the same in terms of dimensions and name and format, but the image itself can be whatever it is you want. If I double click on this one, you can see it is the background I'm currently using in my file manager. Over here, since we're already here, when you start up Multiman, it does like a a splash screen like a little boot image and that image you can change to whatever you want the image responsible for that is called cboot.png i've already changed mine to this one and while you're here in the multi-man image viewer there's a few things you can do you can zoom in an image and out with the right thumbstick you can also move left and right and up and down or move the image around with the left thumbstick you can also cycle through the different images in that directory just tap l1 to go to the previous image r1 to go to the next one Next, let's talk fonts. It's very easy to switch the fonts in Multiman. Just come to the fonts folder here, go into the user folder, and there you can have, I believe, only up to five fonts. You see they are named from font zero up to font four, so a total of five. They're in TTF format, which is an extremely popular format, and you can find tons of fonts out there for free all over online. When you find ones you like, bring them here. Make sure you uh, change the file name to one of these and that's it. You're all set. And it is case sensitive, by the way. There are also some default system fonts that you can change. When you come here to system, you can see there are a few font types there. You can even change the showtime fonts as well. Now these I suggest you back up just in case you don't like how they look after you've changed them. Now once you've changed them, let's go back to the main menu here, come to settings, go to font preferences, and you can select which font you want. Now these here, the default, the pop, the ones with the names, those are the ones that are in the system folder, except I forget which one is which. And then here are your user ones, starting with your font zero down to your font four, and you can change them however you like. So when you want to change fonts on the fly, whether you're here in the menu or if you're in the file manager, you can press R3 or your right thumbstick down. And when you do, it will change the font. See how it's cycling through the fonts. Let me show you here. See, it cycles right through them every time you press R3. And that's a quick and easy way to change them on the fly. All right, so real quick, I'm also going to here address the colors, like the colors of my fonts, for example. This is something that's done, I believe, in the colors.ini file. You have to change some stuff there. I'm going to do a tutorial on that colors.ini file. If we head back to the Multiman uh, wiki page, you can see there's a section addressing that colors.ini file. And if you're already familiar with how to do this, you pretty much already have an idea of what it is to do. The hex colors are there and that's what needs to get changed in order to change the colors of the fonts like I did on mine. So if you know how to mess with those things, you can start and just experiment or just wait a little bit. I do have on my list of tutorials to do that tutorial within the next week to two weeks. So hopefully we'll get to it in time and show you how it's done. Okay, so these next couple of things I'm not gonna spend too much time on because I've already done tutorials for them. First, 
is the background appearance. There's a way where you can make a video clip your background in Multiman kind of like this. Let me go here and show you. See, you can have a little animated background or pretty much a video clip of whatever you want. And you can have, I think, up to eight or nine different video clips. The other one is how to make your own audio. Multiman comes with its own stock audio file, but you can change this to whatever you want. My current one is over 30 minutes long and it works just fine. So the link to those two tutorials will be down in the description if you want to check them out. All right, and next up, when you have PS3 games that display here in the games column, you normally get a few image files that pop up and you can change these image files to whatever you like or however you like. Normally, when you have a PS3 game here and you hover over it, normally you'll get a background image that displays, you'll get the box art image that displays, and then you'll get the title image that also displays, which usually shows the title of the game. And you can change all of these three to whatever it is you like if you want. Now, before you do that, you need to get the game's ID in order to do that. When you're hovering over the PS3 game, press square and you will see the ID of the game right underneath the box art. Make a note of it. In this case, it's Black Ops 2 and it's Bless 01717. Now let's head on over to the file manager. You're gonna go into the Multiman folder, then into the USR DIR folder, and then here into this covers folder. This covers folder is the folder that holds all of the PS3 games box arts. They're all here. And you can see my bless 01717 is right there. And when we double click on it, there is the box art for Black Ops 2. Keep in mind if you use Webman that if you change the box art here, it will also change in Webman because Webman, when it looks for the box art for PS3 games, it normally gets it here from this cover folder that is in Multiman. So just keep that in mind. All right, next, the other two images. Let's head back to the USR DIR folder. Now you're gonna go into the cache folder up here and then look for the ID again and you should find two image files with that ID. And here we go, bless 01717 and there's two. The ones with the 1920 after it are the background images. So here, let's click on that and you'll see the background image there. And then the 320 is the title image. So if we click on that, you'll see the little title image there or whatever it's called. So again, you can change all of these images to however you like. Keep in mind, make sure you keep the name the same, the format the same, and the dimensions the same, and then you'll be good to go. And that's gonna do it for today, guys. I don't want the video to stretch on too much longer, but if you have something that you know about Multiman that maybe you think most people don't, something that's kind of on the down low or secretive that you think would help us, make sure that you let us know down in the comments section. And if we have enough more of these kind of secrets and hidden stuff, then we may have to do a part two. I will be doing a couple tutorials on Multiman here in the near future. You know, I appreciate you watching. If you found anything here helpful, useful, informative, entertaining, or you just wanna throw some love or appreciation to the channel, the best way to do any of that stuff is just to hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone. Be careful guys, be safe, but make sure you have fun and we'll see you on the next one.